Well, you know, when we read the Bible, much of the Bible was, was written from a Jewish perspective. And I'm not Jewish, and most of you aren't either. And so that's why when we read certain passages, we have to look at it through a Jewish lens. Cuando leemos la Biblia, muchas partes de la Biblia fueron escritos a judíos. Y no soy judío, y la mayoría de ustedes tampoco, entonces tenemos que ver a estos pasajes desde la perspectiva de, de un judío. And, um, and like I've always taught in hermeneutics, when you read the Bible, you got to use your Bible glasses. And what I mean by that is one lens is literal. Is it literal? One lens is figurative, is what I'm reading figurative. And the bridge in between is the culture of the verse I'm reading, right? So is the verse I'm reading literally what it says, or is it a poem, or is it a prophecy? And then the other lens is what I'm reading uh, figurative. Is it literal? And then the bridge is, can I understand better what I'm reading if I understand the Jewish culture, or the time that Jesus, for example, the New Testament the time that Jesus and the disciples were living. Uh, la Biblia habla de, en el, en el libro, por ejemplo, de Apocalipsis, de dragones y sellos y, uh, y, y, y estas cosas son, no son literales. Uh, y tenemos que saber de qué estamos leyendo y también de la cultura. You, like you read in Revelation, you read about seals and you read about dragons and uh, the whore of Babylon and it even talks about death being thrown into the lake of fire. These things are figurative, figurative things. And then of course you read literal things, the stories of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, y cosas uh, históricas como los milagros de Jesús. So then we come to Hebrews, which is one of my favorite letters in the Bible, Hebrews. And the whole letter of Hebrews was written to Jewish people. So to understand Hebrews, you have to understand where they're coming from. Y una de mis cartas favoritas en la Biblia es la carta de los hebreos. Toda la carta estaba escrita a hebreos, judíos. Y para entender la carta, y, y el propósito de la carta era decir a los judíos que Cristo Jesús es más grande que sus héroes políticos, sus héroes religiosos, hasta los ángeles. Cristo Jesús es supremo. And the whole point of Hebrews is to tell Jewish people, Jesus is greater than your Jewish historical figures he's greater than your leaders he's greater than your prophets jesus christ is the greatest high priest and he's even greater than all the angels all of them y está hablando a los judíos y por muchos muchos años sabemos que los judíos tenían que llegar a dios con sacrificios animales porque la sangre de los animales los limpió de su pecado and we know that the Jews had to come to Jesus every week with animal sacrifices because the animal sacrifice, the blood of the animals uh, forgave their sins. So the priest was like a butcher, you know, he was just up there killing animals, sacrificing animals over the altar. Los sacerdotes eran como carniceros, estaban matando eh, a los animales y luego ofreciendo su carne. Eh, la Biblia habla en el Antiguo Testamento El, el salmista dice, levanto mis manos a Dios como el sacerdote, eh, de, como el sacrificio del atardecer. Even the psalmist says, I lift my hands to God like an evening sacrifice. The image is a priest raising his hands to God as the smoke of the sacrificed animal goes up to God and the blood that was sacrificed for the forgiveness of, forgiveness of sins. Every week, every week, every week when you went to church, you had to bring doves or animals or goats or sheep or something. And it was sacrificed before God for your sins. So you come in your F-150 and you throw a couple animals on top. You come in, we chop up the animal. This is for years and years and years. Por muchos y muchos años, cada vez que llegaron uh, al templo, tenían que llegar con animales para el sacrificio. Si no llegaron con animales, vendieron animales allá atrás o palomas. If you didn't have animals, they would sell some to you in the back. Y el sacerdote... Cada año, cada año era especial, el sacerdote entraba en un lugar santísimo, un lugar súper especial. Puso la sangre de los animales sobre él y luego él lavó su cuerpo y luego entraba en el lugar santísimo para pedir perdón del pueblo de Dios por todo el año. And then once a year, the great high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he'd sprinkle the blood of these animals for the forgiveness of sins. He'd sprinkle himself with blood and then he'd wash himself 
And then he'd go into this holy of holies place to offer a sacrifice. That's where the presence of God was with the Ark of the Covenant. And he would go in there and offer once a year sacrifice for forgiveness of sins. Y luego en la carta a los hebreos, capítulo 10, versículo 19, vemos otro sumo sacerdote. And then Hebrews 10, 19, we see another great high priest named Jesus Christ. Así que hermanos, mediante la sangre de Jesús, tenemos plena libertad para entrar en el lugar santísimo por el camino nuevo y vivo que Él nos ha abierto a través de la cortina, es decir, a través de su cuerpo. Y tenemos además un gran sacerdote al frente de la familia de Dios. Acerquémonos pues a Dios con corazón sincero y con la plena seguridad que da la fe. Interiormente purificados de una conciencia culpable y ex, exteriormente lavados, exteriormente lavados con agua pura. Mantengamos firme la esperanza que profesamos porque fiel es el que hizo la promesa. Otro gran sacerdote, el último gran sacerdote, el último sacrificio, Cristo Jesús. Y podemos entrar en el lugar santísimo confiadamente. Porque tenemos este sumo sacerdote, Cristo Jesús. Hebrews says, therefore, brothers, Hebrews 10, 19. And sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Cristo Jesús en la cruz del Calvario gritó, consumado es, ofreció su cuerpo como el último sacrificio. Y ahí una vez y para siempre, y para siempre fue el sacrificio por nuestros pecados. Jesus Christ had, it was extended on the cross, his arms stretched out, and he screamed, it is finished. And right there, when he screamed, it is finished, he offered up his body as the last and perfect sacrifice for our sins, once and for all. And then Jerusalem was wiped out in AD 73, was completely sacked. They didn't leave one stone on top of the other of the temple. And since AD 73, they have never again offered an animal sacrifice. It's like Jesus said, that's it. I'm the last and greatest sacrifice, and that's it. En 73 años después de Cristo, invadieron a Jerusalén, tumbaron el templo, aplastaron al templo y desde aquel momento hacia ahora no han ofrecido ni un sacrificio de animales. Es como que Cristo Jesús estaba diciendo, ya, ya no más. Es como que Dios estaba diciendo, ya di mi, mi cordero perfecto y ya no más sacrificios. It was the last and the perfect sacrifice. And since we have that great high priest, we go into the throne room of God confidently. Entramos a la presencia de Dios. El escritor de Hebreos dice, acerquémonos pues a Dios confiadamente. We come into God's presence boldly. Another translation says boldly, confidently. Even though we're sinners, aun siendo pecadores. Somos lavados en la sangre de Cristo Jesús. We are washed by the blood of Jesus even though we are sinners. Boldly into God's presence. Wow. <clears throat> I hear this all the time. No, nah, well, Pastor, I, you know, I want to come to church, but I'm just not good enough. I'm, I'm not a, a religious person. I, I just don't feel like I'm worthy He escuchado esto tantas veces. Pastor, pues quiero ir a la iglesia, pero no me siento digno. Soy pecador. No soy digno para estar con los manitos ahí de la iglesia. Pues, ¿quién es digno? ¿Quién es digno? Who's worthy? Arnold, are you worthy? I'm not worthy. I've screamed awful things. I've done, I've sinned against God in my mind, in my thoughts. Yo he gritado cosas feas, yo he pecado contra Dios, yo no soy digno de entrar en la presencia de Dios. ¿Quién es digno? 
who's worthy to enter in confidently and boldly into the presence of God? Pues la Biblia dice que es por fe. Con un corazón sincero y luego dice por fe. With a sincere heart and faith is how we come into his presence. La palabra ahí con corazón sincero, sinceridad, ahí quiere decir ocultando nada, nada oculto. The word there means nothing hidden. We're hiding nothing. We're coming into the presence of God with empty hands. Con manos vacías entramos a la presencia de Dios. Los arrogantes no pueden entrar confiadamente. Arrogant people can't come in boldly into the presence of God. You can only come in with a sincere heart and faith that God provides to you. It's by faith. Y, y nos invita, el escritor de Hebreos nos invita, acerquémonos pues, acércate pues a Dios. En el Antiguo Testamento el lugar santísimo era para una sola persona. Y ahora está, Cristo abrió la puerta y dice que nosotros tenemos entrada a la presencia de Dios. In the Old Testament, the holy place was only for the high priest. It was only for him. Nobody else could come in and Jesus swung the door wide open by his death and resurrection. And now we have access to the presence of God. You and me have access to the presence of God. We can go straight to God, straight to him. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through a pastor. You don't have to go through some holy person. You can just go straight into the presence of Jesus. Tú puedes ir directamente a la presencia de Dios. No tienes que pasar por algún sacerdote, pedir el permiso de algún pastor, dar un cheque a un evangelista en la televisión. Tú puedes entrar directo a la presencia de Cristo. No sé tú, pero cuando yo quiero hacer algo, cuando yo necesito ayuda, yo quiero ir directamente con el jefe. ¿Dónde está el jefe? I don't know about you, but when I want to get something done, I look for the boss. Where's the boss? Let me talk to the boss. When I was in college, I worked at Pizza Hut in Minnesota. And I, I was a waiter, and I worked the counter. And our cook, when he quit, it was his last day, he put pickles in all the pizzas, all the carry-out pizzas, as a joke, right? And so one by one, all these people came back with their pizzas. And I was at the counter. And they let me have it. I heard creative curse words that I hadn't heard in years. They told me to do physically impossible things to myself. They talked about my parents and my mother and my grandma and all kinds of interesting things. And I just said, you know what? I understand. Just a minute. Let me get the boss. Save all that for the, for the manager. Let me get the manager. Yo, tra yo trabajaba en Pizza Hut en la Universidad de Minnesota cuando iba a la universidad. Y una noche yo estaba trabajando ahí y el, uno de los cocineros era su último día de trabajo puso pepinos en todas las pizzas y luego llegaba la gente enojada y dirigían su ira a mí porque yo estaba ahí enfrente y usaron maldiciones muy creativas y grite, grite yo les dije mira, mira, mira guarda todo esto voy por el jefe voy por el, el gerente y fui y él tenía que salir y él enfrentaba todo y él estaba dando eh, cupones de pizza gratis, pizza gratis, pizza gratis, playeras y cualquier cosa. He handed out free pizza coupons until they were quiet. He got t-shirts out there. He was handing out cups and all kinds of stuff. I didn't have to deal with it because I wasn't the boss. They needed to go to the boss. Ellos tenían que ir con el jefe si querían recibir algo. Y yo también cuando tengo un problema, cuando... Me siento lleno de pecado y quiero ser salvo y necesito una sanidad. Yo no quiero ir con un, un ayudante de Dios. Yo quiero ir directamente con Dios. I don't want to go to the assistant to the regional manager, right? I want to go straight to God if I have a problem. If I'm sick, if I'm full of sin, if I need a miracle, I don't want to go to some junior, junior spiritual leader. I want to go straight to God. Straight to God. And the, and the writer of Hebrews says, you, it's inviting you. It says, hey, approach God with confidence, with boldness. Draw near, approach, come into his presence. You have access to the very presence of God. 
tú tienes acceso a la misma presencia de Dios el escritor de Hebreos te está invitando acérquense acérquense a Dios con un corazón sincero come on, come on approach God with a sincere heart y saben que ¿Cuál, cuál, cuál es el milagro no tiene que ser perfecto porque quien te está lavando Cristo con su sangre dice que el sacerdote fue lavado con agua pura Cristo ya nos está lavando de afuera y de adentro interiormente y afuera y somos limpios la Biblia dice que podemos levantar manos santas en adoración no porque somos santos porque, pero porque Él nos ha limpiado con su sangre He's washed us and He's cleaned us from the inside out outside and inside and the Bible even says that we lift up holy hands are we lifting up holy hands because we're holy we're only holy because Jesus Christ made us holy by his shed blood he made us holy he justified us the Bible says he nailed our sins to the cross and that's why we're holy and we can stand in his presence boldly confiadamente en su presencia acérquense a Dios en Santiago 4.8 la Biblia dice acérquense a Dios y él se acercará a ustedes otra invitación. In James 4, 8, we have another invitation. It says, come near to God and he will draw near to you. Come near to him. Take a step. Come into his presence. Algunos tienen miedo de entrar en la presencia de Dios. Porque creen que les, les va a esperar un, un buen regaño. O un castigo. O un Dios enojón, un Dios gruñón. Some people are afraid to come in to God's presence because they're ready for a, a, a nasty lecture or an angry God or a God that's going to come with strict punishment for them. But if you come with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, it's a different story. Pero si llegas con Dios con un corazón sincero y fe, es una historia distinta. Llegamos a Dios por su gracia en los versículos famosos Efesios 2, 8 y 9 dice que que nosotros somos salvados por fe no por obras en Efesios 2, 8 y 9 it says we are saved through faith and not by works we come in with full assurance of faith somebody put on Facebook a few years ago it said it said I re, uh, that, that the law says man I really screwed up I don't want to see my dad. And Grace says, man, I really screwed up. I need to see my dad. Because when you come into the presence of God, you don't find anger and bitterness and resentment. You find mercy and grace and a second chance and forgiveness and hope. That's what you find in the presence of God. You don't find an angry, capricious, bitter man. Alguien puso en Facebook hace semanas. La regué. No quiero ver a mi papá. Esto es lo que la ley dice. Pero la gracia dice. Hice esto y esto y esto y el otro. Necesito ver a mi papá. Porque cuando llegas con tu Padre Celestial, cuando llegas a su trono de gracia, no encuentras a alguien enojado y caprichoso. Alguien que te está esperando con un bate de béisbol. ¡Pum! Encuentras un Dios misericordioso, un Padre perfecto. Alguien que te va a dar amor y gracia y misericordia y una segunda oportunidad y comprensión. Esto es lo que encontramos con Dios. Y es por eso que el escritor de Hebreos dice, confiadamente, confiadamente entramos en su presencia. Acerquémonos pues. And that's why the writer of Hebrews says, we boldly, we have confidence to enter into the most holy place. And he says that we should come, it's an invitation to come, we should draw near to God with full assurance of faith. Draw near to God, come near to God. Now, if, if you're not sincere, 
if you have hidden sin that's un unconfessed, if you're doing something terrible that nobody knows about, you need to make that right. You need to say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. You need to make that thing right. You should not boldly approach God. You should approach God with repentance. Ahora, si tienes algún pecado que está, si estás escondiendo algunos pecados, si no estás caminando con Dios, si tienes secretos, si no estás bien, si no tienes paz con Dios, hay que arreglar esto primero. Hay que, hay que llegar a Dios con un corazón de arrepentimiento. Señor, perdóname, perdóname. Y luego, esto también es un corazón sincero cuando reconocemos nuestro pecado. That's also a sincere heart when you recognize your sin and you open up your heart to him and then you come into his presence boldly. But the offer to us from Hebrews is draw near to God. Come close to God. Don't be afraid of God. Come close to God. You know how you come close to God? You read a little bit of the Bible every day. You listen to the Bible on your phone. You listen to praise and worship music. You pray. You just talk to him like I'm talking to you. You just talk to him every day. That's how you come close to God. He becomes a part of your life. You recognize that he's a part of your life. You invite him into your life. ¿Cómo podemos acercarnos a Dios? Con oración, con alabanza, leyendo una porción de la Biblia todos los días. Escuchamos la Biblia con nuestros celulares. Alabamos a Dios con música de alabanza y adoración. Hablamos con Cristo Jesús en una manera eh, natural. Conversamos con Dios. Y así es como podemos acercarnos a Dios. That's how you get closer to God. You get closer to God every day by recognizing his presence. It's, a, it's just a continual recognition that he's with you all the time. Es un reconocimiento cada minuto que él está contigo. Es como nos acercamos a Dios. That's how you come closer to God. Muchos creen que tienen que estar en una reunión de la iglesia y con música y con este, un ambiente especial y con un orador especial. No es así. A veces sentimos la presencia de Dios así también. Pero podemos tener un, un, un caminar diario con Dios, cotidiano con Dios. Some people think the only way you can get close to God is if there's a special speaker. And he's going, Poo, ha, pa, and the music is playing, and that's how you get close to God, right? You have this rise, crazy emotional experience. And you can have that, too. I'm not saying you can't have that. But the more powerful thing is to every day just have an, just have an awareness of his presence with you all the time, all the time, praying all the time in your car, talking to God, listening to worship music. It's a more powerful daily experience with the presence of God. I remember many years ago, uh, we had a really beautiful service on Sunday night here, and my dad invited us forward, and I was a single man. I had my apartment, and we all came forward, and we had a really nice prayer time. Yo me acuerdo hace muchos años, cuando era soltero y triste, tuvimos una reunión especial un domingo en la noche, y sentimos la presencia de Dios de una manera muy especial. Pasamos aquí enfrente y estábamos cantando y orando y era muy especial. Y luego regresé a mi departamento, me senté en mi trono, mi sillón, saqué el remoto y puse a ESPN ahí a ver cómo, qué pasó con mis queridos Dallas Cowboys, right? I hadn't been able to see the game. I got home, I got in my lounge, you know, my Barca lounger, I got my Dr. Pepper and I turned on the TV ESPN to see what happened because I had missed the game for being at church. I wanted to see what happened. Y después de unos minutos, yo sentí fuertemente en mi espíritu que Dios me estaba diciendo, hey, ¿puedes también experimentar mi presencia aquí en tu departamento o solo allá en la iglesia? And then I felt really strongly in my spirit, just a really strong, like Jesus was speaking to me and said, hey, is it just in church? Or can you, can you fellowship with me here in your apartment too? Or is it just church? Y dije, pues no, señor, no, no, es aquí también. Apagué la televisión, saqué mi guitarra. Todo pastor sabe tocar algo de la guitarra, algo. Every pastor knows how to play five chords on the guitar. It's G, C, D, E minor. We all know how to play those chords. So I turned off the TV, I got out my guitar. Y comencé a cantar este corito sencillo. 
Espíritu Santo, bienvenido a este lugar. Un coro sencillo. And I got my guitar and I started to sing just all by myself. I started to sing, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Espíritu Santo, bienvenido a este lugar. Y comencé a cantar. ¿Y saben qué? Después de cinco o seis minutos, sentí la presencia de Cristo conmigo. En una manera muy especial. Como que estaba as, as, entrando en la misma presencia de Dios. Es como que Cristo me llamó y me dijo, acércate, acércate a mí. Y en unos minutos ya estaba ahí en su presencia. It was just like, in just a few minutes of singing, just all by myself, I felt the presence of Jesus in my apartment. And it was almost like he was inviting me and he was saying, hey, come close to me, draw near to me. And I came close to him and I could feel his presence And it was great. How long has it been since you've drawn near to God, since you've been close to him? Has it been a while? ¿Han sentido la presencia de Cristo contigo? ¿O ha sido un tiempo? ¿Ha sido un tiempo? My dad would talk about a couple that was in a pickup before they had bucket seats. An older couple. And the husband told his wife, Or the wife told her husband, she said, Honey, I remember those days when we would sit close together in the pickup and snuggle in the pickup. And he said, Well, I didn't move. <laughs> I'm still driving. Who moved? And so she came over and sat next to him. Mi papá hablaba de una pareja ya de años. Y la esposa dijo en su pickup, dijo, Ay, mi amor, yo me acuerdo los días en que estábamos muy cerca en el pickup de novios. Y el esposo respondió y dijo, pues yo no cambié de lugar. Aquí estoy manejando, fuiste tú. Y dijo, ah, sí es cierto, sí es cierto. Cristo está en el mismo lugar. Fuimos nosotros que cambiamos. De. Jesus is still in the same place. Who moved? He didn't move. He says, hey, listen, listen, man. If you come near to me, I'll come near to you. Hebrews says, draw near to God in full assurance of faith. Boldly come into his presence in full assurance of faith. And he'll be there. You have that great privilege of having Jesus Christ, the presence of Jesus with you. Cristo dice, acerquémonos, el, el escritor de Hebreos, acerquémonos pues a Dios. Cristo está diciendo, acércate a mí, acércate a mí. Qué privilegio. Mira, vamos a hacer una decisión esta semana, Señor. Voy a estar más cerca de ti. Voy a estar más cerca de ti. Let's make a decision this week. Hey, November 26th, I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to get closer to God. I want to get closer to God. I want to come into his presence because I know when Jesus' presence, I'll find acceptance and love and mercy and forgiveness. Yo voy a hacer la decisión de estar más cerca de Jesús porque cuando estoy más cerca de Jesús encuentro misericordia y compasión y amor. Esta semana acércate a Cristo. Yo les invito también acércate a Dios. Dile a tu vecino acércate a Dios. Tell the person next to you draw near to God. Come close to God. Come close to Him. Vamos a estar de pie. Let's stand up, please. Vamos a hacer un compromiso con Dios. Dios, quiero conocerte. Quiero estar en tu presencia todos los días. Quiero conocer a ti más y más. Let's make a commitment to Him today. Lord, I want to be closer to you. I want to know you on a daily basis. I want to take advantage of being in your presence. I want to draw near to God in full assurance of faith. Señor, te damos gracias por tu palabra. Gracias, Cristo, por esta invitación. Gracias porque podemos acercarnos a ti, Señor, y experimentar tu presencia. No porque somos dignos, pero porque tú pagaste el precio por nosotros. Por tu sangre tenemos entrada. A la presencia de Dios. Thank you, Lord, that we can come in 
confidently into your presence, not because we're big shots or we're worthy, but because you've invited us, because you spilled your blood for us and gave us access to your presence. Help us to every day this week come closer to you. Come closer to you. Ayúdanos, Señor, esta semana a estar más cerca de ti. Acercarnos a ti. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen.